Hey guys, Don Boy 61 and today we're taking a look at the Paolo Emilio, the all new global experience ship that is a tier seven premium destroyer. She is wonderful, magical, and quite tough to play. So make sure you stay tuned and listen to the full review. So you understand all of the details. We'll be going over commander, mod slots, the stats, and then we'll go ahead. We have a Kraken in her game. We have a Kraken game to show you. So uh, it, overall, we, we got you covered today as far as good Paolo Emilio content. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, the Paolo Emilio does have the nickname, the YOLO Emilio over on the PC. And uh, that's because of its uh, distinct traits, such as its rolling smoke and very heavy hitting torps. Thankfully, we get both of those things, but there are some caveats which we will go over. But before we do, let's go ahead and talk about commanders. Now, you can pretty much go with either commander on this. Um, I've kind of started le leaning towards Luigi. I started off uh, with Giuseppe, but Luigi seems to be where I'm going just because he does help with the guns and that lets you stay stay up in a uh, out and out like destroyer duel, which this thing not very strong in out and out destroyer duel. So let's go ahead go over the stats. So for Luigi, the skills that I'm running for his inspirations, I'm running Mortif to uh, help with that reload time and I'm running Bay. Uh, doing this allows us with the concealment mod allows us to stay at the same range of detectability as our torps, which is useful. So that way we don't have to fully suicide torp. As long as a ship is coming towards us, we can successfully torpedo him. Luigi's base trait, well, it inc increases the duration of the engine boost and reduces its reload time. Then we're running Observant Rage, which is going to reduce the main battery reload time of the Destroyer and improve torpedo detection at the cost of slower rudder shift time. Then Swordfish, which is his unique trait, which increases torpedo damage and increases the duration of engine boost. I think you could do that or Mortar, but the only thing with Mortar is it is going to uh, increase that detectability and we are kind of balancing on a very fine line here when it comes to detectability. Next, the go-to, probably the new go-to trait for all Destroyers, Perceptive. If you didn't know, Perceptive is now available on every single Destroyer Commander. In fact, you know it's a Destroyer Commander now because they have that little uh, indicator saying what kind of ship uh, Wargaming recommends it. Anyways, every single uh, every single Destroyer Commander now has this skill right here. It increases the visibility of enemy torpedoes, reduces incoming damage to your Destroyer, and it will show the closest enemy. That's right. You have the abilities of Twist and Track, uh, but I think with some better... Uh, advantages, which specifically is the the redu reduction to incoming damage. Next, I'm running Smoke on the Water, and then finally Unstoppable, uh, mainly because Unstoppable's uh, main gear set, its, uh, its hidden ability, is when your engine gets knocked, which it will in the Paolo, um, you don't actually lose a ton of your... Uh, a ton of your maneuverability. You still keep a majority of your speed, which is excellent. The other commander is Giuseppe. Now, Giuseppe has a very similar build, but instead of uh, running this ship or instead of the build being more focused on buffing the guns, this one is all about buffing that smoke screen and having dispersion and coming dispersion. Um, so basically his base trait increases that smoke deployment time and his unique trait also increases that deployment time. And you're like, oh man, that's great. It gets two of the charges. Uh, this, the, the, the rolling smoke seems like the greatest thing ever. And you think that, but there is one small caveat. It's that you can't actually use the smoke at top speed, which is unfortunate. The rolling smoke has a speed limit of 40 knots, which means you can do one of two things. One, you can set yourself to three quarter speed, um, and it will take care of you and you'll be able to do what you need to get done. Or number two, uh, you have to kind of wiggle the ship in and out and by by uh, turning the ship all the time while you're in that smoke, you'll go ahead and burn enough speed where you'll be below that 40 knot radius or and you will stay hidden in the smoke. If you don't do that, the smoke becomes, well, kind of ineffective, which is kind of unfortunate because, well, it's kind of the, the, the main, one of the main things to do in this ship. As far as upgrades go, let's go ahead and take a look at them. Right now, I'm running Aiming System Mod 1 in the first slot, then Steering Gears just to try to increase that maneuverability. 
then concealment mod to once again help with that uh the 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 concealment because it is not is a is a conspicuous destroyer or not conspicuous it has a 7k base the detectability range which is pretty high for a base trait and then finally uh main battery mod just to once again help boost that main battery reload time try to get it somewhat competitive when it needs to face off against other destroyers because uh if you don't win your early destroyer battles the, the match is over for you uh once you do that the the world's your oyster but if you fail to do that well it's it's going to be fairly rough for you now let's go ahead and talk the stats of this ship just a small disclaimer these are the stats with luigi so uh your stats may vary based on your build but this is what i have here hit points 24,400 with between 6 and 60 millimeters of armor i'm not going to show the uh, armor view I know that it's like the bog standard destroyer armor with 19 millimeters of armor the only interesting fact on it is on the lower end where you would expect a torpedo belt to be on most other like cruisers because this is sort of a light cruiser in a way it does have 60 millimeters at at the waterline but not full on the side so that's one little quirk of the armor main battery it has four two-barreled guns that are 135 millimeters firing range is going to be 12.1 kilometers with a reload time of 8.2 seconds giving you a shell sprint of 59 180 time on those guns 20.7 seconds with an he damage of 1950 giving you a dpm of 115,050 and a nine percent chance to set fire ap damage is going to be 3000 giving you a dpm of 117,000. no secondaries are on this destroyer though it does have very powerful torpedoes three four barreled 533 millimeter launchers one that is center mounted that can fire onto either side and then two uh, one on each side and the ones on the sides have fairly good launch angles so you can really keep your angle while you are launching these torpedoes reload time on them though two minutes 120 seconds it's a long wait damage on them though it is a huge massive 23,700 and 67 these things will if you can load a full tube onto pretty much any battleship you can pretty much take any battleship about with one with long, one tube if assuming they all land detectability on those torps 1.7 kilometers and a speed of 67 knots in a torp range of only six kilometers aa it does have an aa range of four kilometers with a minimum aa damage of 30 dps and a max of 63 max speed of the vessel 43 and a half knots with a pretty wide turning radius of 810 meters and a rudder shift time of 4.8 seconds. So uh, detect detectability by sea is going to be six kilometers detectability by air 3.1. And then while in your smoke, it's going to be the base standard two, which is really nice, which means you can go ahead and fire those guns when you are hiding in the smoke. And those are all the stats of the Paolo Emilio. As far as the history of the vessel, she didn't really exist, but she did. And by that, I mean, Paolo Emilio was one of the Capitani Romani class cruisers that were ordered, but were never delivered. This class of cruisers was essentially a light cruiser slash heavy destroyer. Scholars argue over the classification of it, but in this game, we've gone ahead and uh, we've gone ahead and called it a destroyer. It was designed to counter the uh, and outgun the large French destroyers of like Le Fantasque and uh, Mag Magador, but uh, sadly she was only four of this class were completed. Uh, Paolo, she her hull was laid down, but she just was never completed, so she doesn't really have an operational history. So with all that said, let's now go ahead and take a look at a game in this ship. And we are out here on Atlantic and uh, it is capture the base. So there's no command points for us to really capture other than the enemy base. So it is just going to be an all in out slug fest. Now, Palo is a fantastic ship when you can use her right and when you can win your 1v1 duels. If not, it is very is it can be quite quite the cruel mistress. I would say, um, if you're thinking about this ship, you may want to make sure you either play a lot of games with division mates because it is somewhat difficult to win one v ones in uh, against other destroyers in this 
but as we can see we have a division of two destroyers right here we go ahead wide launch the torpedoes one of my preferred tricks is to go ahead and use the wide launch just because uh it tends to catch people out just because of how much space these torpedoes can get shiritsuru goes ahead hits the brakes hard and his teammate goes ahead and drops smoke for himself and his partner now when you are colliding with japanese destroyers like this this is probably the best matchup you can get just because we take one down right there beautiful those uh the alpha damage on the torps as we saw twenty three thousand. it will absolutely nuke a destroyer if you can go ahead and essentially win your jousting contest with the uh with the torpedoes but if you don't win the joust uh it, it can get rough uh paolo is definitely easily countered by ships especially those with uh sonar just because if you go ahead and pop smoke that's going to be your main defensive technique and you're trying to get close enough to use those torps well you you can definitely get a uh, sonar and it will be a very bad day for you now shiritsudu pops out of his smoke he's starting to run away but we can go ahead and just tank and just chunk him down that is one of the nice things the guns when they hit are absolutely massive damage dealers um which is why i've kind of started using them more and built the ship overall towards more of a uh of a gun build but we go ahead and fire our other set of torpedoes there just as some insurance we see his torpedoes coming in now we uh, thread the needle right there beautiful and uh, he is all but one shot away we go ahead hit the speed boost now one of the things you have to kind of keep in mind with the ship that we were talking about earlier is the uh the the downsides of the speed boost uh and how if you use it in the wrong time and you need to use your smoke it can actually end up doing you a little bit more harm because the smoke is limited to that 40 knots which uh it, which is unfortunate i think uh if they come out and be like oh actually we're gonna go ahead and raise the speed limit on the smoke all the way up i think i would probably switch back over from luigi over to giuseppe but as it stands right now i think the smoke is a little hard to use just because you can't go full yolo on it um but anyways we go we went ahead took out those two destroyers now we see the cluster of battleships here and if we can go ahead and hit any of these guys, it will be a very good day for us. We can see the hood, and I think that's a Colorado, are both heading in a similar direction and somewhat towards us. And that's the key. Um, because our, our torpedo range is the same as our detectability range, once we can hit these torps, we need to start turning out. Because if we wait until um, we wait until any later we are going to have a lot bigger problem. And even then you can see right there, we end up getting spotted. We got one torpedo out on the indicator and now we're turning on around, around waiting for the next sort of set of torpedoes to be able to be launched. And we're running away and we're already unspotted. And that's the nice thing is if you kind of master that turn, you can go ahead, pop in and out of spot. And uh, these guys are uh, are all but sunk we take we get the colorado one hit on the nose and a teammate finishes him off and hood is looking fairly low don't know if he's going to be in range but we can hope and we can also see that this vanguard is uh driving into a disappearing wedge and by that i mean if we look he is uh the way he is currently going if he decides to hold on that pattern we there's no escaping us so we're going to be able to go ahead and use our yolo the only bad thing right now is well we don't have torpedoes that are ready i mean we have one set but uh we we're going to want a little bit more insurance also if we pop out now he's gonna have more time to react we can very clearly see he is steaming straight towards us we're gonna go ahead pop this thing into full reverse slow on down and wait to uh, ambush our prey because uh, at this point vanguard is spotted we know exactly where he is there's no need for us to uh, put ourselves in too much danger. We have our smoke on standby. This is going to be the perfect little uh, ambush play that you want to do in the Paolo. Um, as I was saying earlier, though, uh, would I would I spend my money on the ship? Yes. Or not even money. Would I spend my GS GXP on the ship? Yes. As someone who only has like one or two of the GXP ships, uh, this one has shot up to the top of my list just because of how fun it is to play. Um, I think in solo play, it can be a little rough, especially if you end up coming up against more competent gunboats and there are a lot more competent gunboats out there, but when you can get this thing to sing, 
there is nothing more fun than doing this right here where we we come around this corner vanguard all he knows he's dead we hold our torpedoes we end up getting proxy spotted but we go ahead we uh we get one set of torpedoes off second set just in case that force first set misses but uh here's a pretty much full health vanguard four torpedoes in the side of him one two three four and he is done and that's what we need to do that brings us up to four kills we get the dev strike and we can see the final ship over on the enemy team uh we can see this georgia here and we are going to try to get on over to him to uh claim our beautiful kraken in the paolo and uh yeah this is exactly what we're going to do and that's that's what we're going to do. Wait for that speed boost. This is one of the other really nice things about the Palo is just its flat out speed. Uh, once we realize we can go ahead and hit that speed boost, you're going to see we get we get in the 48 knot range, which is absolutely ridiculous as far as speed of ship. And look at this beautiful angle that we can fire off the front of our torpedoes. It has a great angle of attack to go ahead and fire the torpedoes. Georgia has his engine uh, his engine room or his engine not disabled, but uh, it cut in half while he is plowing straight into the line. So this is all but a death sentence for him. But yeah, Paolo, I'm enjoying her. I think she's a fantastic ship. I would absolutely say if you have nothing better to do, spend your spend your global XP on it. If you're looking for a fun destroyer, spend your global XP on it. But just understand that it is not going to stand up to everything. It is going to be one of those ships that you need to understand the what is going on in the battle and rely sometimes on your teammates to help you out, especially when you get into gunfights with other destroyers. So yeah, guys, that's Palo. Let what mean let what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.